Hello guys, this is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. Welcome to this course. I have designed this course keeping in mind the feedback that people have provided me on topics that they're interested to learn. So all the topics that you have told me that you want to learn in Salesforce development, I have covered in this course. So this is going to be one course if you want for Salesforce development, I will recommend you to take this course. What are we going to cover in this course? So in this course, we are going to talk about some very important topics that you need to know and that you will deal with in your real world as a Salesforce developer. So we are going to cover those real world topics. We're not going to cover the basics of programming in this course. I have a separate course that is designed for students who have no prior programming experience and they want to learn from the beginning. But this course is designed for people who are already familiar with the basics of programming and they want to cover some advanced concepts or complex scenarios related to um, for Salesforce development. So we're going to talk about asynchronous Apex. In this, we will talk about batch Apex, we'll talk about future methods and how we use those in the real world. We'll also go ahead and talk about very, very important topic called REST and SOAP web services and how do you write these web services in order to call, make a call out to an external system or uh, getting the data from an external system and displaying it inside of Salesforce. So we'll cover all that in this course. We will also talk about testing framework, like how to write test cases and what are the best practices of writing test classes. So we'll cover these Apex complex triggers as well in this course. And in the middle of the course, you will also have a mini project cover, which will give you a good end to end flow of how things are done. If you want to integrate Salesforce with an external system like YouTube, how are you going to do that? We will cover in this course. I'll also give you an overview of developer console, what all things that you can do inside of developer console and also inside of Salesforce workbench. So if you're not familiar with the different uh, powerful stuff that you can do inside of developer console, I will give you that information as well in this course. And we're going to make a mini project which will integrate Salesforce with YouTube. And uh, basically we're going to talk to a YouTube API and we will display information related to a video inside of Salesforce. So it's gonna be a good end-to-end -end project that we're going to cover in this course. And also for all our development purposes, we will be using a Visual Studio Code. So if you are not familiar with how to download this software, I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on downloading the Visual Studio Code and also how you can use Visual Studio Code and authorize the org and all those cool stuff in order to go ahead and push the code to your Salesforce org from Visual Studio. You will get in-depth knowledge of using Visual Studio in this course as well. What else we are going to cover in this course? So as I mentioned to you, I'll give you real world examples with every topic that I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover multiple examples related to triggers here, not just the basic example, but some complex scenarios as well. We'll also discuss some of the best practices that is important in Salesforce development. And this is one of the very common questions interviewers ask in, in the interview is what are the best practices that you guys follow? We'll also talk about some powerful Google Chrome extensions, and I will show you how you're going to use those Chrome extensions like Salesforce Organizer and stuff like that. Apex PMD for Visual Studio, those are some of the powerful extensions that we're going to talk about, and also some Visual Studio extensions as well. We'll also cover asynchronous Apex versus synchronous Apex. We'll talk about schedulable Apex, stateful batch Apex, future methods, and all those topics in this course why you should take this course. So if you are looking to get your first job as a Salesforce developer, or you are an intermediate, or we can say a beginner Salesforce developer, and you want to get into some hardcore stuff of Salesforce development, then this course is designed for you. I repeat, this course is not for people who have no programming experience. I do have a separate course for that. So I recommend you to check that one. But this course is designed specifically for people who are familiar with programming, but want to learn some advanced concepts related to Salesforce development. The 10th best job in the US today is not a CRM developer. It is a Salesforce developer. So Salesforce is kind of acquiring the market. It already has about 30% of the market share right now, and it is going to go tremendously in next few years. So becoming a Salesforce developer is going to be one of the 
lucrative career options that you can have right now. I would recommend you to take this course because with this course, you can become a great Salesforce developer. And also the topics that are I have covered in the course is based on your feedback on what you want to learn in or what are the things that you are struggling with. So still to become an expert in Salesforce development, this course is for you. Is Salesforce going to be still in demand 2020? A lot of people ask me, how is Salesforce as a career option? And by this graph, you will definitely understand the Salesforce is market is growing tremendously and it has already have about 300,000 jobs new jobs were introduced in the market because of Salesforce and it's going to grow in the upcoming years so I'll request you guys to start your career as a Salesforce developer if you've already made the decision and you do not know where to start your Salesforce development career this is the place to go for so I'll go ahead and join this course and I will see you inside the course thank you